are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Due to the intensity of some of these scenes, viewer discretion is advised. First, we go to the Hamilton County Common Pleas Court in Cincinnati, Ohio. Standing in the hallway outside the courtroom is Cassandra Jackson. She's here today seeking a protection order, often sought by domestic violence victims. Unfortunately, a court official is telling her that she missed the deadline and will have to come back. Jackson, a working mother, grows increasingly frustrated. The argument's loud enough to be heard in the nearby courtroom. So loud that Magistrate Judge Michael Bachman, who's presiding in the courtroom on the other side of these doors, could not hear an attorney question a witness. Jackson continues to plead her case to the man in the hallway, but is denied. Jackson continues arguing for finally storming off. But Judge Bachman is unsatisfied and takes matters into his own hands. About 10 seconds after Jackson walks away, Bachman leaves the bench chasing her down the hall. He catches up to Jackson at the elevators and orders her back to his courtroom. What happens next is critical to the eventual outcome of this story. As they head toward the court, Jackson tries to turn down a hallway. That's when Bachman grabs Jackson's shoulder. Even as they enter the courtroom, Bachman still does not remove his hand. Keep in mind, Jackson's in court today to file for a restraining order to protect herself and her children from an allegedly abusive relationship. Bachman orders Jackson into the jury box, then tells her she's about to be arrested for contempt of court. But the insensitive treatment continues from the rest of the court staff. Two officers are brought in and Jackson attempts to flee. Additional help's required to restrain Jackson. She resists. But is eventually removed from the court in handcuffs. The situation is taken to another level when Jackson's dragged to booking where formal charges are made. Officers handcuff Jackson to a chair as she continues to resist. After struggling with officers one more time, Jackson's strapped into a special chair and wheeled into holding. She'll serve two days of a 10-day sentence after the presiding judge dropped the contempt charge and the rest of her sentence for good cause. After the footage goes public of Bachman chasing after Jackson and putting his hand on her, Jackson files a civil suit against Bachman, and the magistrate's told he must either resign or be fired. Bachman chose to resign. If Bachman needs to enter a Hamilton County courthouse in the future, he must now do so as a private citizen. We're in the Miami-Dade County Criminal Court for a hearing related to the murder trial of Lucas Kendall. Well, the first thing we needed to address is he's been restored to competency. Correct, Your Honor. There are two evaluations from Dr. Ruiz Quintana and Dr. Richardson. They both find that he's competent. Kendall's just been deemed competent to stand trial, where he faces charges of second-degree murder and attempted murder. While working as an armed security guard at a Miami strip club, Kendall approached two men who were sitting inside a truck in the parking lot. 
Kendall claims one of the men threatened him. He says he also believed one of them had a weapon. So he opened fire, killing one of them with eight shots, four of them in the back. Both men were unarmed. In the gallery today are friends and family of the deceased victim, Kawan Burr, including his devastated parents. To evaluate his competency, Kendall was moved from a prison to a hospital. And defense attorney Carlos Gonzalez wants to keep him there, fearing what might become of his client's mental state if he returns to jail. And then the issue is that you want him housed where? At the same facility he's been housed. In order to prevent him from decompensating? Yes, Your Honor. He eventually decompensated to the point where he was sitting in a fetal position, naked, not eating, and not interacting with any human being. As Gonzalez goes on, the request to prevent Kendall from returning to jail becomes just too much for Bird's father to bear. Yeah, well, my son is dead, man. My son is dead. He needs to go to prison. He don't need to be laying on no mental hospital. He needs to, need to go to prison, man. Come on, church. He want to play crazy. He wasn't, he wasn't crazy when he killed my murdered my son, man. He wasn't crazy then, but he's crazy now. All of a sudden, he's crazy now. You want to lay in a mental hospital? Take him out. You, you don't murder my son, man, for nothing? When he was trying to get away from you, you was, the, you, you was trying to get away from you, man. And you kept shooting him while his back was under the truck. You kept shooting him, man. You kept shooting him. And his back, his back was tight to you, man. He was trying to get away from you. And you murdered him, man, like you. You murdered him, man, like that. The distraught father is escorted out of the courtroom. His family members look on. Meanwhile, the defendant just watches it all unfold. At trial, Kendall decided to represent himself and attempted to use the stand your ground defense. So the trajectory coming from outside of the vehicle would have to come in that downward. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you're referring to. He was convicted on both charges and is now serving a life sentence in the Florida prison system.